Good morning. It's Mark Reed. It is September 15th, uh, 2024. Nice, warm, sunny morning. Uh, dry, as dry as it's been for the last six weeks or more. But anyway, I've started harvesting my sweet potatoes and I thought I'd take a peek at some of them and go over a little bit of what I uh, look for and what I don't look for in my seed grown sweet potatoes. So first I guess I'll take a peek under this sheet and these are some of my better uh, flavor wise, production wise uh, roots that I cloned last year. They came up, uh, some of them, I think one of them came up originally from a seed in maybe 2020, 2021. I'm not sure. I've got it written down in my little notebook, but I don't have my notebook with me. But I'm going to talk more about ones that I don't like and reasons why. Oh, here's something curious. This is um, after I cloned my plants this year, I threw the extra roots into a pot, just on top of a pot. So these are roots that were harvested last year, about this time, stored all winter and then used to make slips. So you see they uh, grew these masses of roots here and they did not make hardly anything as far as new storage roots. I kind of expected that and now I know for sure. Uh, replanting an entire sweet potato root is not gonna give you much of a yield. It's gonna give you a bunch of little skinny ones and the old one all fugly looking. So, come on down this way. I had nine, uh, they come up volunteer all over the place, but I had nine this year that came up early enough that I gave them pots. And out of that nine, this is the only one that I'm gonna keep. I almost thought I didn't want it at all because when I first pulled it up, uh, his uh, root had grown through the, the drainage hole and I thought, well, they're just gonna be all long skinny roots and I wouldn't want it. Oh, hi, Miss Toady. Were you living under these pots? You better find you a better place out of the sun. What you doing? So anyway, this one has um, some qualities I like and some qualities I don't. What I like is it's a nice, compact, bushy plant. Uh, what I don't like is the roots are not as much of a clump as I like. I like to see a nice bunch of roots all just right in the same area directly under the stem. But even though this one isn't quite that much, it does have some nice roots and they are got a hint of yellow inside, which indicates that they might be very sweet. So out of those volunteers that came up last year, this is the only one I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna bag and tag these roots and then I'm gonna put this vine back in a pot so that I can go ahead and collect the seeds that continue to mature on it. And over here are some outright rejects. This one, you can see, just got these long skinny roots. Now I've been collecting seeds off of all of these, but um, after today, just ones that get repotted, those seeds will be saved separately. So this one, it just doesn't really show me much. So it's a discard. Here we got another discard as far as roots go. Now this one would make a nice ornamental because it blooms a lot and makes those little skinny roots. But ornamentals are easy to come by. All I gotta do is plant older seeds. And I think I mentioned these all grew from older seeds because they came up in the garden in a place where I haven't grown sweet potatoes for five years. So now I know that sweet potato seeds can lay around in the ground for five years. So even though it has a lot more seeds that could mature, I'm gonna pitch it too. Then here we got this. I'm wondering about this. I don't like this trait of making a single big root, but I always take measures so that the vines don't grow to the ground because that causes the plant to make little roots wherever it roots down rather than some good ones. So I'm wondering, I'm a little curious, 
if this plant was allowed to sprawl and root down, if you would get a nice potato at each of those spots. So the jury's out on this one. It's orange, which also indicates it might have a flavor that I like best. So I may keep this one. Now here's one. Doesn't make any roots at all. And that would be a fine ornamental, but like I said, I have plenty of ornamentals. Same with this one. Makes a bit more of a root, but not enough to mess with it. And I don't like that stringiness. See how it's got one root here and then another root here. I guess that could be called chain root and I do not keep them. And that one's gone. Another one, no roots at all. And it blooms nice, so that'd be a great ornamental but I don't need any more ornamentals right now. And then this one, <laughs> I don't even know what to say about this one. This makes that one big curly cue, and it is, I can see here, it is orange. So we might eat that one, but I'm not gonna bother replanting its, um, replanting its seed stems or cloning it. It's a reject. And here, last and not least, it's another nice big uh, ornamental. See, it doesn't have roots to speak of. It's a very large vine, lots of seeds and flowers, but um, it's a reject too. So there's some of the things that I look for, or more specifically that I look to cull in seed grown sweet potatoes. Now, when I get into harvesting the rest of them here, there's a set there that are mine that I grew, that I planted seeds, and they're from newer generations. So I hope to find a better root quality on those. And then on down are more that were grown from clones. So I'll make some more videos as I get the rest of these harvested. Bye.